We're here with Which Motorhome magazine and we've collected seven luxury motorhomes. Luxury mean, generally means anything over about £100,000 and they have to offer great value. They're all A classes and they're all quite big but that still value is really important whether you want to go off on a long term European tour or you just want something a bit more spacious. Our luxury motorhome test, this Concorde Charisma really is a class of its own. It cost just under £219,000 and it is a home from home, but it should be for that money. It's set on the Avico 3 litre chassis with the automatic engine. It's got loads of really nice touches, let's go and take a look. Even as you walk up to the vehicle you'll notice something different and it's got keyless entry, another sign of one of the important features of this motorhome. So no keys needed to get, get in. You simply press your finger on the button, wait for the pad to light up and you see all the numbers, enter the code and you open the door. As you'll notice, it's a completely flat floor throughout, so it means step three access from the cab to the rest of the living area. These seats lower quite a lot for comfortable driving positions. And you'll notice here, it is a left-hand drive, but right-hand drive is an optional extra. Um, and it's Concorde's own cab dashboard, so it's, um, it's configured to specifically set the seats further apart, so it's an easier driving position, both visibility on and off the road. This table is brilliant because all you do to move it around every which way, simply press the button in the middle and then slide it to wherever you need it to be. There's a drop down bed above, however you can specify lockers instead of this if you didn't want it. As you'd expect of a luxury van, the kitchen is very good but this one's better than most. It's got a three burner hob, sink with integrated draining board and even got some worked out unit. There's plenty of storage as well as a pull out larder unit that you'd, you'd see at home and this tech tower with fridge, freezer and oven at the top, brilliant. As you can see and with any luxury motorhome you do expect it, you get a really good bed area. It's a big double island bed so you can walk around. It's got loads of storage, wardrobes on either side and one here and it's even got a space for a TV here. This motorhome actually comes with three zone heating, which means you can heat the different areas of the van to different temperatures as, you, as required. i890g it starts at just over £96,000 however this one's got plenty of options for taking it well above the 100 mark the metallic paint you see there is an £1,800 option it's actually based on the Fiat Ducato 3 litre engine and it's 9 metres long hence the tag axle there let me show you inside This person has got a flat floor throughout, which means there's no raising of or lowering of cab seats to make them into a decent lounge area. There's a cab door on each side, which is convenient when you're out and about on the road, and a drop down bed above you, really nicely integrated into the lockers, and it's electric, so it drops down at push, push of a button. The lounge is actually really spacious. You've got a reclining action on this sofa for more comfort. There's two forward facing travel seats there and there's a big table. Although a little difficult to get around makes dining for all occupants very easy. The kitchen area is quite a smart L shape. It's got a three burner hob with a high speed burner. It's got this integrated recessed sink and drainer with a mixer tap and plenty of storage below. There is a slight curve to this worktop which is, it looks smart but might not be so practical for spillages and things. The fridge freezer opposite, has got a high level oven, might be too high for some but it's really good size and there's a TV unit hidden behind this door here. In the middle of the van you've got this sort of dressing area stroke washroom area. You open this door and there's a toilet and sink in there and it actually pulls across to shut over the whole of the back end from the rest of the van. The shower's on this side, it's a little bit cramped and dark but 
it's and there was a wheel arch moulding, but it's a perfectly usable shower. The best feature about this van is the wardrobe though, just behind me here. It's really big, it's floor to ceiling, it allows you to store lots of stuff. At the very back you've got the island bed. There's a door here that shuts off the toilet area at night and it's a very good space. It's slightly offset with a wardrobe that's slightly bigger on one side and it's a little bit on the cramped side but it's, it's a full size bed. Another useful feature in the bedroom area is this flip up vanity unit. It's got a full length mirror and drawers which you can actually access without having to lift this up and there's storage on both sides. Even though it's an island bed model and they're known for slightly smaller storage spaces, it's got a pretty good garage area. There's a big door on this side, but a slightly smaller door on the, on the other side. There's tie down points, plenty of space, and a little shelf with some useful utilities like the wastewater drainage hose. Sealand is actually one of the lowest priced in this group. It starts with £92,000 but, but that is in left hand drive form. If you want right hand drive that's just over £2,000 more. It's distinctive with its grey and white cream curvy body. It's actually quite, I think it's quite nice to look at but let's go and take a look inside. Based on the Fiat you get the standard cab. Um, upgraded cab seats though which are as you can see it's a flat floor throughout so they're level with the lounge area where you get a half the net, two travel seats, big side sofa and there's even a pull up TV in this unit here. The big table swivels in all directions and it's actually really useful. Above you'll see the drop down bed, it's fairly standard fare in A class form but it pulls down creates that second double should you need it. Katago's curvy exterior continues really in the kitchen with this lovely curved unit offering plenty of storage below and worktop space even though there's a three burner hob and a sink. Sink lid also doubles as a useful shelf and if you pull down this handle here you get a coffee machine integrated and it's tucked away neatly and doesn't take up too much space. Opposite you'll find the fridge freezer with an oven above, it's a little high for some but it depends what you, what you like. The washroom split across the aisle between the kitchen and the bedroom. The toilet and sink are in an enclosed compartment on this side and the shower, a circular version with a wheel arch that intrudes slightly into the floor space is there but it's a decent size. There's also a big wardrobe here. If you shut this door over at night that, gives, that shuts off the bedroom area from the rest making it an ensuite but that, there's no divider between that and the toilet. There's two single beds at the back, they're quite high but there are steps up and you can also make a double should you want an extra big bed. And there's wardrobes below on both sides. Platinum Edition is one of Frankia's, let's say, more well equipped models. It's really good value in standard form. You actually get the 3 litre auto automatic as standard and it comes on the tag actual chassis. This one, as a custom vehicle, has been spec'd up quite a lot so it's £175,000 but they start from about £130,000. Let's go and take a look. As you can see, with cab seat swivel, this makes a really good lounge area. There's a flat floor throughout, which is quite stereotypical of Frankie's, and there's also a cab door on this side. You notice the drop down bed makes a really good sized double, however, it's got a really neat touch where a slide out section makes it into twin singles as well if you want to sleep longitudinally. Another really useful feature of Frankia is this sliding table. It extends and there's storage in the base but also it slides on rails out of the into the cab out of the way of the lounge area so when you wanted to use it as a lounge it's a really nice area. It's a really useful kitchen area if a little bit compact. It's a little bit worked up at the end but you get a full cooker which is quite unusual for European and there's a fridge freezer opposite. There's also plenty of storage underneath and next to the fridge. 
Between the kitchen and the bed, there's a, a washroom area across the across the van. It's got this really handy feature where this door, it's a whole wall, and it sw swings across to cover off the washroom and bed from the rest of the van. There's a shower and the toilet and sink opposite. The single beds have steps up, obviously, and also they make a double bed as well with a ladder to provide access when that's in place. And there's wardrobes underneath. This is Heimer's B798SL. It's based on a Fiat, so hence no Starline badge, and it's on the tag axle as you can see here. It's eight and a half metres long, it's quite lengthy in size terms, hence the tag axle. It starts at 100,000, this one here is priced at just over 112. It's also got a new for this year feature, Heimer's wide door. It just makes access all that much more easier. Let's go and take a look. The extra wide door is also matched by a double wide step and a broad inset step to make access really easy. As it's a Fiat, the cab is a traditional, normal Fiat sort of setup with a broad partial shelf at the front. Because of the spec of this model, it only has pull across front blinds um, instead of the normal drop down version you find on the more expensive models. The cab seats swivel at the same height of the lounge and it's a completely flat floor in the lounge making access really easy. It's a big spacious area and as with the other Heimer in this test, the table does pull apart with an extension in one simple action. Step up into the kitchen area and as you walk through the van you look at your feet you'll notice lots of hatches which shows you've got lots of underfloor storage. Kitchen area once again is very good, there's plenty of space, it's got a modern Thetford hob, it's got a sink with an, a built-in drainer with Korean style worktops and there's central locking to these doors and there's plenty of them. There's even a large slide out, slide out larder unit. On the opposite side you'll find the usual Dometic Tech Tower fridge with an oven set rather high but there's an oven there. The washroom is split across the aisle and it's a foot of the island bed but there's a toilet and a sink and storage on, on this side and a large glass door shower compartment on the other side and a door even slides across at night to shut off the area. The island bed it has got suspension underneath, it's like a support system for the mattress and it slides up and out of the way during the day when you want to move around and as a chaise long if you want to spend some time relaxing and then at night it's electric and it just slides flat. The Heimer's garage is really good as it's got two big doors, one on each side and a small access hatch on the back makes loading and loading things easier, even easier including bikes because you can just wheel them in and walk them, walk them along the garage. The, the bed also, it's an island bed remember, it rises electrically and lowers electrically allowing you to adjust the amount of space inside and the amount of space in the garage depending on how much you need. from Neesman and Bischoff. It's a brand that builds only luxury A-classes and you can tell. New for this year is this distinctive exterior. It's a love it or hate it thing. Um, and But look at those headlights. You get built-in LED DRLs as standard. And the silver bodywork's obviously an option, but it looks great. Let's take a look inside. The lounge is nice and big and with two cab seats swivelled and raised to the height of the lounge area it makes a really good space and the table condenses and expands as you need it. It's a Fiat cab so the, the dash is fairly standard as you'd expect and this has got the manual box. There are no cab doors you notice but there is an over cab bed which drops down fairly low and it's a good size. The kitchen's fairly compact and we'll get to that later but it does come fairly well equipped. It's got a three burner hob, a sink with its own little draining sink as well as a bigger sink and opposite you'll see the fridge and an oven at a really good sensible low height and usefully it's one of those models where the door pushes out and slides in out of the way should you want to grill anything. There's even a microwave above. And on the back door here, this is the door, access door to the washroom and the bedroom, you'll see this panel. It's an optional extra obviously but it's real grass. Let's take a look inside. 
It's the washroom area and this is why a kitchen is quite compact. You know, it's a really big space. There's a massive shower, sink up separately and the toilet is set in its own little compartment there. There's even a wardrobe. The single beds at the very back are actually quite low, sensibly with good steps and there's more of those grass panels at the very back on the wall. This is the Heimer B680 Starline S. The Starline refers to the Mercedes engine and underpinnings. Obviously, you can see it's a twin rear wheel chassis and it's rear wheel drive as well, which is better better on-road stability and it can actually have it's probably got a really good payload in the back it's a three litre engine it's automatic which is mainly indicated by the S which is a pack with various other options but mainly the automatic gearbox the Heimer cab is very stereotypical of an A-class it's obviously got this big dashboard and a blind that goes up and down and a big drop-down bed above the reason for the sharp front of the Heimer is actually quite upright at the, at the nose. It's because it makes this bed a really usable double size. Um, both cab seats swivel to, to the lounge area and although they look low for driving, they will raise electrically to bring them up to the level of the other seats in the lounge. And there's a circular table that swivels this way and that and also it extends outwards quite easily with a touch of a button to make a good sized dining table. The kitchen is compact but very German. There is a there is a hob, three burners, a sink, Corian style worktops and also integrated draining board which is actually quite useful. There's plenty of storage below and there's even an oven above a full height fridge freezer. Simply open this door and step through into the washroom area. There's a toilet and a sink on, on the left and they can which can be closed off with a shutter and there's also a separate shower with a good door and it's a good size on the right then simply at night all you need to do is shut the door off and you've shut yourself off and you have a nice ensuite area at the back there's twin singles with plenty of storage below and really good steps up what's great about most of these twin single beds is they make into a really massive double as well should you want that and Heimer have usefully supplied a ladder which slides out to allow you access when the double bed section is covering over the fixed steps <laughs> 